Hey guys, so today it's a very anticipated video from you guys and myself as well because I've wanted to make this video ever since I watched this show. Lots of people asked me to do a reaction to it, but by the time you guys were asking for the reaction, I had already watched it. Right away I had so much to talk about with no one to talk to, so I started going to Twitter and I tweeted about it a lot and then everyone was like, do a video and I was like, okay, I'll do a video. It's not a commentary, but it's a video. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the show, The Society. Do you want chaos? They have too much power. It's a Netflix original show. It came out May 10th, I believe. Uh, I had already filmed this video last week, actually, but after I started looking at the footage, I realized nothing I was saying was making sense and the video didn't have any structure to it. It just became really confusing and the show was already confusing enough, so me not sticking to a point while talking just made it more confusing. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about a character list as well as my opinions on specific characters. And then I'm gonna talk about my overall thoughts of the society, so talking about the theme of it, the uh, main plots, that the show focuses in on, kind of the world building that they've done, and kind of just the show in general, not going into too specific stuff. I'm gonna talk about the things I love, the things I did not love. I'm gonna be talking about um, relationships. And then I have theories and just other obscure things at the end. Character list and my opinions on specific characters because I feel like that's important before I go in and give my opinions on things if you don't know what my thoughts are on the characters. So we have Allie. Allie's the main character of the show. Her whole character is based off of how she lived in the shadow of her sister. She never got the limelight, blah, 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 blah. She's jealous of her sister and she always looks for her sister for help because her sister has been protecting her for all these years. Later on in the show, she becomes a leader figure and has to lead the town. Some of us thought it would be fun be in charge of ourselves. Her, I actually didn't have that much of a problem with her. You can see her make mistakes a lot when she becomes the leader. I sort of like that because it adds this uh, almost human-like aspect to her. She's not gonna make every single right decision. She's gonna be selfish in some way. She's gonna have these character flaws. These characters are characters, but they also try to make them as human as possible and give them as many human flaws as they can. So so when she becomes leader, she makes a lot of fucking mistakes. But that makes sense, right? Because all this time she's been doing everything for her sister, everything through her sister, with her sister's guidance, and, and later on the show she doesn't have that anymore. So for me, she wasn't a character that I loved, but she's just trying to figure it out along the way like everyone else is, but she has to lead everyone while she's learning. Cassandra is her sister. Cassandra is basically the student council president. She's kind of like the top of the school because she's like honors, whatever. She's just like that bitch, you know? She's really strong, independent, has this leadership energy to her that really is just trying to lead the town. There's no civilization here, not until we start one. Um, which people don't like. <laughs> um, I think if I saw her more <laughs> than I would have liked her, but since it cut off so short, um, I didn't get to, s we didn't get to really see her character that much. Becca. Becca is just the little sweetest baby. Like she's literally just like a sweet baby and who's also having a baby. Um, all she's trying to do is have her baby and just like stay alive, you know? And she's like going through it uh, and wonder like how she's gonna like deliver her baby because there's no doctors around here. Sam is her best friend, her best friend. He's also deaf. His sibling is also Campbell. Sam has dealt with a lot of uh, abuse from Campbell and we'll get into that right now because Campbell is actually a psychopath. Sam explains in the show how Campbell is a diagnosed psychopath. I'm not gonna ask for power. We're gonna take it. And Campbell is the worst. He's a psychopath. He manipulates people through the whole thing and he's a great villain. It was that really good balance between like 
a, just a little shit annoying character and then like also a really good villain and I think they balanced that well throughout the show. Grizz. Grizz. Best boy I know. Best character of the show honestly. He kind of plays that boy scout role of the show. Um, he's really smart. He's that smart jock character like unexpectedly smart you know because he's also funny but he's very smart. He takes on this sort of like almost like big brother role to a lot of different characters and is always the first to comfort someone when they're in need of it. I'm only on like the third character. Kelly, Sierra Burgess girl. Great, amazing. She should have been leader, but you know what? Whatever. She's doctor now. She's the best. She's honestly just like, she has such a like a strong personality, but also has so much kindness in her, which makes her so likable because once she like sets out what she wants to do, she just does it. From the very first episode after she breaks it off with Harry, she sticks to that through the entire thing, but still has enough kindness in her heart to show him sympathy when he needs it. Will annoyed me. And I know you're probably thinking, what did he do to annoy you? I don't know. It's, just, it's not that I didn't like him. It's just there was something about the lines that they were giving him that just annoyed me. That's how I feel about Will now. I'm hoping if they do a season two, they will kind of draw out his story a little bit better to make him a little bit more anything. Ellie. Ellie deserves so much better. I felt for Ellie. Ellie is that character that you just had so much sympathy for. She was alone and isolated from everybody in the town. She didn't have any friends before she went on the trip and she didn't have any friends when they came back to this empty town. I actually loved her character and where they went with it because it went from this like I don't care about anything I don't even want to be here to like the second she opened up to one person he ruined her Harry Harry's a big character in this Harry is the popular boy uh, <laughs> he's not a jock, but he's like just the popular kid is also fighting to be leader. For some reason, he like really wants to be leader because he doesn't have his own property. He's like, I don't want to share anything. Like his story arc like, is like constantly fluctuating in the show. So it's like, oh my God, like I'm big man on campus, blah, 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 blah. Then... After episode three, he goes straight to Bach Rock, straight to Bach Rottom. What? He goes straight to Rock Bottom, and then gradually he like s trickles back up, which we no one like we really were, weren't paying attention to him, and then he trickles back up, and then he like bites everyone in the ass, and like, what the fuck? He's also like a drug addict, which we will get into later. I have a theory about that. Ooh, Lexi, fucking worst, honestly. Like, who is she? Literally. Who the fuck was she? I did not know who she was. I thought her and Gwen were the same person. So when she came up and was like, I'm trying to be mayor, I was like, who are you? What's your, what is even your name? They threw her in there out of nowhere. Honestly, they threw her in there out of nowhere with that whole scene. The poison episode when Clark and Jason like make her like, change her menstrual pad in front of them. I wish they focused in on her more throughout the show. Like in the beginning with say Ellie, you knew Ellie was gonna be a prominent role because they focused on her on the bus with Campbell. You knew that was gonna be an important part of the show and then it keeps following them throughout. But with Lexi, I did not know her name until she fucking showed up to be mayor. I didn't know who she was. Next is Helena. I keep calling her Helena, which I don't know why. Helena. Helena is actually a really good character. Her aspect kind of is the only source of religion you see in this show. What religious factor plays into what's actually happening to them? Is there any, if at all? But it does open questions about could that be a hint at some sort of religious aspect into this town that they're in. I don't know. Um, Luke, disappointing. Um, I know everyone's like, he was forced into doing it. Blah, 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 blah. He could have been like a superior role, but he got manipulated by two idiots. Literally all he could have done was go up to Helena after it happened and been like, this is the tea, but he didn't. Jason, meathead number one, Clark, 
meathead number two, nothing else to them. Gordy is an intellectual. He is the source of brains on the show as well as Bean, but Bean is more of his sidekick not sidekick but just like she doesn't play as big of a role as Gordy does she does help in a lot of different ways but we don't really know anything about her character as much as we know about Gordy. Gordy from day one was helping trying to figure out where they were he also jumps into the medical side of things to help with that. Now that we have got an idea of my thoughts on characters and sort of their overall story that plays a role into the show, let's talk about the society and my overall thoughts about the concept and theme and tone of it because it's a it's a pretty complex show. The society has two main stories that they are in. They have figuring out where they are, what's happening to them, how did their town become a ghost town, and also how are they going to survive building up a civilization. The show makes it a priority to make the audience question it. They want the audience to interact with it. They want the audience to theorize. They want the audience to be left questioning things and reading into things maybe that they don't even need to read into. It does seem that they are constantly switching what they want you to see and what they want you to pay attention to. So when you watch it a second time, you're like, I missed all these things because I was paying attention to this because the director shifted me to that when actually this thing was happening that was a big clue to what could be a possible plotline in the future or a tell to what's actually going on. It's mysterious and dark and it also taps into commentary on today's world and society and politics and it kind of plays the story of what would happen. What would happen if in today's climate and society, if 200 people were left stranded with nothing, how would they start civilization again? What would happen if the youth decided what happened next? Which is like a strong commentary as being like, today's generation, Gen Z is gonna be the future. They're next up into what the world becomes if there even is a world after gen z because the world is dying and stuff i mean that's like it's very that's very much of like a big like concept to take in but if you just think about the overall story yeah that's kind of where they're hinting at is like oh uh, what would happen if these kids right now in today's world first world country had to rebuild the whole justice system laws everything. What do they know? What do they remember? What skills are they going to take from their previous life and put it into making the society? You know what I'm saying? Oh my god. This show. Talking about where they are. So when I'm talking about this, they named the town Newham. It was previously called West Ham. So that's how I'm going to be referring to the two. Throughout the show, it hints at where they are and trying to get back home. They have a whole scene about the eclipse and how the eclipse was supposed to happen until 2024 and it's only 2019 and blah 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 blah. It hints at how they're in the same world but maybe not the same universe. They talk about parallel universes, they talk about maybe even like a black hole. Like It's all kind of like foggy yet to what's actually going on and through the entire show they leave that as a complete mystery to you. You don't know what's happening, you don't know where they are. It hints at maybe it could be a parallel universe. It also had this whole thing about a smell at the beginning of the show and then they kind of touch upon it and they're like the smell's gone blah, blah, blah. and they talk about how this might have been their parents punishment like the kids got taken away as punishment to for the parents because sam's father didn't do this and didn't want to pay and blah 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 and this is their punishment all their kids get taken away boohoo it's so vague at this point and so unclear as to what is actually going on between West Ham and New Ham that I don't even understand that they've been there for like almost like a year or so or actually no I have no idea the conclusion by the end of this season is not at all a conclusion <laughs> it's not at all a ending it is it's just opening up a whole nother fucking world of possibility as to what the hell is happening um it ends with the dog the dog that earlier in the season gets killed by campbell shocker fucking psychopath bitch it ends with the dog and this old lady which i don't know if i was supposed to remember that old lady 
but I don't think she was ever a character before that. She has like white hair, like she's futuristic, cool. She's not futuristic at all. But she goes into a room and starts reading a book to children. They pan at the children, they pan to the lady, they pan to this plaque with all the students' names. The 200 or so students that are now in Newham and not West Ham. My first thoughts was that maybe it was labeled as like a strange disappearance, as like a, you know, like a plane goes in the fucking Bermuda Triangle or something. Like I kind of, that type of thing. Like, so maybe they concluded that the bus just went missing. Maybe they concluded as, as like the buses fell into a fucking lake or something and they all died. I don't really know. It just shows that in West Ham, they're gone. <laughs> they're donezo. It connects to this bus driver that was shown at the beginning of the show that was arguing with uh, Harry's parents or Harry's mom. He was the bus driver and was like looking at students in their pictures or whatever, fun. But it barely even opens that. It like barely touches it, which I think for me while watching, I was kind of getting a little frustrated because I was like, you're barely tapping into one of the most interesting parts about the show. I understand why they're doing it. They're trying to give you that slow burn. Ah, I'm like, talking so much. <laughs> Problems I have, the biggest one will probably be lack of diversity and I know you're probably like trend, like blah, 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 especially if you're not a minority in any sense, you're gonna be like, blah, blah. why are you talking about that? But like, it is like an important thing that this show is trying to reflect life so much and one of the main things that is missing is diversity. The real world is diverse. There's lots of different people. And sure, I could see myself in like, Helena, because she's Asian. There's a lot of other people that couldn't feel represented, you know? Uh, I don't know where West Ham is. Uh, let me see if I can find out. Connecticut. Okay, it's Connecticut. So maybe it is realistic because Connecticut is pretty damn white. I already talked about Lexi a little bit, but I'm gonna talk about her more because it was just so annoying the way that they brought her into the story. I think that was probably one of my biggest problems in the actual story and plot building because her part and her role in the end is really substantial and it really makes a huge difference as to what's going on, but I did not know who she was. <laughs> How is she supposed to play this big part when the audience doesn't even know who she is? And it's not some sort of like plot twist thing because we already knew that she was angry, but if I can't tell the difference between her and Gwen and they haven't made a distinct difference in their characters or made her assume already like a significant role already or, or not even that significant but just more focus on her so yeah it would have been a plot twist that she would like switch up on them but like I just didn't know who she was that just really bothered me. Allie with the election um she basically makes the election she's like we have to have an election it has to be fair it has to be real they want to do the election to you know give some sort of democracy aspect to the show. Allie is the one that wants to do it, and then when people start signing up for council, she just goes up to them and tells them no. I was like, you're an idiot. Why would you do that? You literally were like, hey, you know, we have to make this election. We have to make it fair, bro. And then everyone's like, okay, like, if we're making an election, I might as well run. I got stuff to say. Maybe I want to be leader or something. And she's like, no, you can't actually, because I'm still mayor. I'm just doing this election as a courtesy to y'all so y'all can feel like you have a say in things when you really don't. And I was like, okay, you're stupid. You shouldn't have done that. You didn't even have to make the election. That was literally not even, a, you, you, you didn't have to have to do that. And you ended up screwing yourself over in that aspect because she literally has a talk with Lexi and Harry and the guard and we're like, hey, don't do it. Even though I made the you know election free for anyone to sign up you guys can't do it because you're challenging my leadership and i was like bro you're stupid you already had the leadership why'd you try to you the one that gave it up another problem i had is too many characters there's too many characters to focus in on and a lot of them don't play a significant role in it. And then when they do, someone like Lexi, where she did play a significant role in it, I didn't think she was because there were so many characters before that just didn't play a part into the story, but they were focusing in on certain shots. They would hang on to a shot of them for so long. And I was like, am I supposed to like remember this character or something? Um, maybe that was the point of it. Maybe they were trying to hold in on these shots of these specific characters to make you think that they were gonna play a significant role when they actually didn't. 
or maybe those characters are coming in season two where they play a significant role. I think the guards switch of character was too predictable. Do they just forget that they're the ones that put Ali in that position? Like there was like a whole group of people that were like, hey Ali, we need your fucking guidance after your sister just died. Like help us, like we'll protect you, don't worry. And she even tells him that she's like, you guys have to be there for me. Like I'm not doing this alone. Like you guys want me to be a leader. Well, you better back me up 150% of the time because I'm learning too. And I need to have that support by me throughout this. And then they just turn on her and they're like, y'all are literally the worst. Like you were literally the worst ever. Like. How are you gonna like, you know, beg her, practically beg her to become the new leader of the town and then be like, well, psych. Okay, the whole psychopath thing with Campbell. I don't know why, why? no one told the rest of the guard because in the show, if I remember correctly, then this could be wrong. Only Grizz was in the room when Sam told them about Campbell being diagnosed as a psychopath. It was Grizz, Ali, Will, Kelly, Becca, Cordy was it? Maybe Bean, I can't really remember. Um, but the rest of the guard wasn't there. I remember that specifically because I don't think they would be taking a side if they didn't know this. But throughout the show, every single character like on the guard or on Ali's side were like, fuck Campbell, he's crazy, blah, 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 because he shoots the gun at the beginning of the season. So everyone's kind of like, what the fuck? Like he's, we got to stay back from him. Throughout the show, I forgot that they didn't tell the rest of the guard. Once they got up to that point where they were going to Campbell and Campbell was manipulating them to do all this stuff, I was like, oh my God, they don't know that he's a psychopath. They never, no one ever told them. <laughs> Oh, relationships, relationships, relationships. There's lots of relationships. Let's talk about Ali and Harry. Ali and Harry are a, a fan favorite of the show. I'm with that. I think that they have a perfect setup for an enemies to lovers trope situation going on. I think that it, it's basically setting it up perfectly. I don't know if they're gonna continue with that because they also have another strong trope with Ali, which would be Will and Ali of a best friends to lovers trope going on. Harry and Ali, basically they have a fling in the second episode that just cuts off after her sister dies because Harry is part of the reason why she died. So it cuts off. And then I kind of see it trickling back into to the plot a little bit more when she goes to his house he grabs her hand and she kind of makes a comment about being in his bed or whatever and then it hints at them again in what was it the last episode or episode nine i can't remember when she talks to him and she's like don't run for a mayor blah 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 she's like i you know there's another i hope there's like another world where we can be friends or whatever and he's like yeah i hope so too i, I would want to be in that world so ooh, tea. but he really backstabs her like to the like highest extent ever. So like, we're gonna clean up his act if he wants this ship to sail because I'm I'm really into the enemies to lovers storyline and I really love Slow Burn too. So like, if you can give me that from Aunt Holly and Harry, I just would really appreciate that. Cassandra and Harry. Now you're probably thinking Trin. They were never together. They're, they're not even a relationship in the show. But I have questions and a theory a theory on it. I have a theory on them. It's really a stupid theory, but like, hear me out when I say it. So they have this beef throughout the episodes that she's in because she ends up dying in the third episode. They have this beef, this like rivalry going on, this feud, if you will. She's putting these ideas in their heads. Now they made her queen. Careful. Everyone's kind of like, where the fuck is this coming from? Because obviously we didn't see them throughout high school. We have no idea what even happened in high school. We just know that he's getting mad because he doesn't like her playing that uh, leader student council president role. I think that they had a different type of relationship in the past, whether that be romantic, platonic, they had some sort of falling out that just blew up to this level of hatred for each other. This seems like it's a setup for something, some sort of flashback. I'm waiting for them to bring flashbacks because there is so much to the past because this drama that's happening can all be sourced from the past and what happened in high school like this doesn't just start from nowhere campbell didn't start pursuing 
Ellie just because they were in this new town. That, that has been like something that has been setting up over time that he's taken observation of her for this long. The beef between Cassandra and Harry wasn't just, you know, stemmed from the student council president thing. It was from something else. Allie and Will had this, you know, she they're best friends from a very long time. That we're gonna we have to get flashbacks of that. Kelly and Harry, why was why did their relationship cut off so quick? That was probably not the first time that has happened. There's these characters that have this already developed thing that's happening, so there has to be more to that. So I'm waiting for them to bring in flashbacks to this. My theory. Now I've tweeted about my theory. I said, Oh, I have a big fat theory on Cassandra and Harry. And everyone's like, what the fuck are you talking about? And I think I hyped it up a little bit too much because it's not that great. Um, I'm really not that good at making up theories. <laughs> so I feel like I'm disappointing a lot of people right now <laughs> by actually saying it. But I'm still going to go with it. I'm still going to try to be confident in what I'm saying and the words that I'm actually speaking out into the world as to what the fuck I'm, you know, talking about this theory, this Cassandra Harry theory. <sighs> okay, so in episode one, they have their party at Newham. They're living it up as their first night without any supervision and any repercussions of uh, the law enforcement or the parents or whatever. The morning after the party, Cassandra tells them that they have to go to the ends of the town, like the exits of the town to see if you know there's a possibility of leaving to go to other towns, seeing what's all that about. So she's like, I'm gonna go down today. Then Harry's like, well, look, like, I'm gonna go down today. Like, I can be a leader too, you know? So he's like, I'll go. And she goes, she makes a comment. She goes, are you even sober? And he's like, fuck you. And I'm like, okay, what? Like, what, what was that about? Like, why would he get so upset about that? And it wasn't just a snarky comment at him partying last night. Like, why would that affect him so much if it was just about them partying last night? Like, I don't think anyone would get that upset about it because he was really like fuck you and then he's like oh, come on guys let's go later on in the season we see harry have an issue with addiction to drugs this makes me think that he had a problem with drugs before they even got to the town and i think that cassandra was the only one that knew about it reach i think so but for me, I was kind of like, why was he getting so upset about that comment about being sober? So that makes me think that maybe, maybe they had a past relationship, a friendship, a, a knowing of each other where Cassandra knew that he had an issue with substance abuse. I just think that maybe she knew that he had an issue with drugs because why would that comment about him being sober hit so hard if they just were partying last night like why would that even even strike a like trigger in his brain to be like fuck you you know like i don't i didn't understand it at, at first i was like why like bro chill like what the fuck later on he has the substance abuse issue and then i go back to watch episode one and i go oh my god what that's weird it could be nothing it could have no relevance to the story i have no idea i don't really know that was just a theory that i thought about there's lots of theories going around about a lot of different things so i thought i would share mine on cassandra and harry because i don't think that their relationship stems from nowhere other than school hierarchy and alpha personalities clashing Eileen campbell are a very big relationship on the show that is like a major part it's super vital to the story about what's happening honestly it could have been its own show with the way that they wrote Campbell and Ellie's story it is so well done that I feel like that could have been its own show this abusive relationship between a psychopath and this very alone isolated girl it's so terrifying and suspenseful did a fantastic job the girl that plays Ellie is incredible her performances were so so good her my favorite performance with her was um in episode uh, I forget which one. The one, Poison, the episode title Poison, the Thanksgiving one. I loved, I loved her performance. The anxiety that she holds throughout that episode. And then when she gets sick and she's on the bathroom and she's just like telling Campbell to go away and she's just ready to die. She was, she was just like ready to go because she felt so guilty about it. I love the dialogue between them. It was so good and it, it made you just like, ugh. It made you like tense up when you were watching their scenes. And that is what I loved. When Campbell came on screen, you knew you were like, you were like clenching. You were clenching because like, I, I was not sure what he was gonna do. Um, and that's a great villain. That's a great villain. I'm not afraid of you. 
you should be. Even when Campbell is not doing like quote unquote like villain things, like yeah, he's doing some villain things, but like to be honest, like he plays this like puppeteer behind the scenes, orchestrating what's happening and using these other people to do his dirty work. I think the actor does a great job at this. I think that the writers do a great job at this. They make you hate him. We have one last relationship to talk about. Woo 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 woo. Okay, Grizz and Sam, honestly the best relationship of the show and you cannot change my mind. It gives this show something more lighthearted. It gives a almost more wholesome, innocent, story and you could tell that this was gonna happen from the prom episode like if you did not think that they were gonna get together when Grizz sat down next to Sam at the prom like you're freaking lying and then Grizz learns the wrong sign language but he was learning sign language to communicate to Sam <laughs> that's so cute it takes on this smart jock like character who was loyal and who is kind and who flirts with Sam and they they have the, like their innocent little scene when he's like, how do you, how do you sign, kiss me? And that's so cute. And I just, wow. But they also have their rifts in the relationship. It's not a perfect relationship. Grizz thinks Becca's baby is Sam when Sam's just saying that it is because Becca doesn't want people questioning who the father is, but Sam doesn't even know who the father is. There's a lot of scenes that I loved in the show. Uh, obviously I love the raid scene. Everybody loves the raid scene. It was like the funniest part about the show and I was like not expecting it to be that funny, but it was like actually really funny. We're living in some sort of fucking black hole in okay. the universe. I really don't think that the yeah, Miranda so warning I'm just trying to make sure that everything's legit so we're not storm Guys, hey, like hey. That. Let's just fucking do this, all right? Um, I loved the Thanksgiving episode. Poison, I think it was called. I really loved that one. I loved the second episode, Our Town, uh, where they play Fugitive. I thought that was a really good episode. Oh, um, the episode after the raid episode, I think it was episode five or six. Uh, the episode where they end up killing Dewey. I don't know if that was after the raid episode or was it the same? I just liked that episode. I liked the trial that happened. I thought it was, oh. It was, it was, it was good. It was good. I really liked, I, I liked it. Blah, blah, blah. Let's talk about some theories. I'm only going to be talking about the main ones that I kept seeing because there was really not that many. Uh, the biggest one that people have been theorizing after a clip that uh, the Society Twitter account released uh, was a clip of Becca and Campbell talking. Becca was recording something and they were talking and it was really weird because I was like, why are they even in the same room like what what is that what is happening um a lot of people are theorizing that Campbell is actually the father of her child which I can actually see because Becca kind of has that similar uh personality to Elle where she's a little bit more shy she's a little less outspoken has this vulnerability about her that he might have taken advantage of when the baby's born Kelly says to Sam and he has your eyes or she has your eyes. I forget if the baby was a girl or a boy. Can't remember. People are saying that, oh, so it either has to be his dad or Campbell. Ew, ew, and ew. and also disturbing. Oh, I, uh, I saw this theory, I forget where it was from. Basically the theory was that um, they foreshadow in the trailer when they use Billie Eilish's songs, they use When We Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go? When we all fall asleep, where do we go? And then bury a friend. Bury a friend. So bury a friend is supposed to foreshadow burying their friends. Cassandra, uh, what's her name? Forgot her name, the girl that died from the snake bite and uh, Dewey. Bold of you to assume that he is a friend, but whatever. When we fall asleep, where do we go relates to them. Basically, this is the theory that they are all asleep on the bus and this is all happening in their heads. That they're not actually doing, this is not all happening, that they're just asleep. That's a very big theory that people have come up with, which honestly feels like kind of a cop out, I'm gonna be honest. The whole thing of we're just it's, a, it's it's that classic thing of when you're just writing an essay and you're bullshitting your way through it and you're like plot twist it was all a dream like yeah we've all done that so for that to be like the big thing that they're, they're doing like if that's the case then i'm gonna be i'm gonna roll my eyes because out of all the things that could have been you're really gonna pull the dream thing which literal middle schoolers use as the end of their essays like stupid oh my god someone said that when you die in the society you go back to the real world 
They said they think this because it is heavily implied that Campbell killed the dog and we see the dog again in the last scene in the real world with the adults. That is also something that I was thinking about. I was thinking about the consequences of death. Are the consequences in Newham relevant in West Ham? What are the rules between these two universes? What applies and what doesn't? If you die in Newham, are you gone forever or do you get put back into West Ham because of the dog. Another theory that came to me while editing is if we use that bus theory of them falling asleep on the bus, what if when they die in New Ham, they wake up on the bus? So the first would be the girl that got bitten by mistake, then Cassandra, then Dewey, and then so on and so forth. But I don't know, that's just a theory that came to my mind while editing. Someone had a theory about the last song used in the last scene of the society. Um, they looked at the lyrics. Part of it says, I'm coming home, I've done my time. Now I've got to know what is and isn't mine. If you received my letter telling you I'd soon be free, then you'll know just what to do. If you still want me, if you still want me. And then later on it says, bus driver, please look at me because I couldn't bear to see what I might see. I'm really still in prison and my love she holds the key a simple yellow ribbons what I need to set me free and I wrote and told her please so it is um kind of spot on to what is going on another part of it says now the whole damned bus is sharing and I can't believe I see so they broke it down in this thread. Um, I'll link it in the description you so you guys can look at these threads on your own. So yeah, uh, I don't know how to say his name. It's like Peefer. Is brought to you by pronouncenames.com. Pfeiffer. Pi Pfeiffer? Pfeiffer? Okay, his name is Pfeiffer. Fun. Um, I don't know, someone else sent me a theory about Peefer. I'm still gonna refer to him as P because I don't, I feel upset from mispronouncing his name. This wasn't my finding, but P means Piper in German. Pied Piper of New Hamelin, New Hamelin is the story of a town that wants to get rid of rats and they call for a man to do it and they promise him money. He uses his flute and gets rid of the rats by luring them into a river where they drown. When he came to claim his prize, the town finally decided not to pay him. Later on, he comes back and takes the kids of Hamelin what happens next isn't very clear since there are many ends existing, but some say he lured the kids to the same place as the rats and left them there. The piper would be P and the rats the smell. The name of the town in the show is also Newham, similar to New Hamlin. Okay, bitch, what the fuck? That is so crazy. That's actually crazy. I didn't even know what Pied Piper even meant. I just thought it was a BTS song if I'm being freaking honest. But holy shit, that's actually crazy. Y'all are y'all got some wild theories. So there's lots of different articles on Pied Piper. It's a very well known story. So if you really want to, you can go and look it up. So the a lot of people think that the bus driver was a like a native of that town before white people colonized it or something. I don't know if there was any like native to there. I mean, there probably fucking was. It's in America. There was probably natives there before the white people came on. So a lot of people think that they, another aspect to it would be that he would be um, a native from that area and he's taking sort of some revenge or uh, some sort of like take on, you know, revenge against the white people, which is kind of great. Um, <laughs> but the Pied, Pi the Pied Piper theory, I think, is actually probably the one of the ones that is most believable just because it's it's such a parallel between the two stories and they really do relate to each other in probably every single way. The rats relating to the smell, you know, the kids, same thing, them luring the rats into the lake and then them luring, luring the kids to this different town or same town or to Newham, whatever. There's a lot of different theories about the society. It's a very, like I said before, it's a show that makes you want to question it. And honestly, that's really good. I think if you can make people really care about your show enough to question it and to, you know, connect theories like this is really, it's really fun and it's interactive and it, you know, makes the show even more interesting to watch. I've talked enough, I've talked about this so much but you know what i've been wanting to talk about it for probably like a month so 
thank you guys for watching i hope you guys liked this video i know there's so much to talk about the society because it is just a very big plot for a show and there's lots of stuff going on and there's lots of different opinions you can have there's so many different characters there's so many different plots and so many different hidden things that you kind of have to watch a lot to fully grasp what's going on so yeah i know i didn't touch on everything about the show i know i didn't talk about specific episodes in general um, because that would just take too long. Um, maybe in the future I'll do another society video, uh, definitely one for season two. And yeah, follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe so you can see more videos from me. Maybe even turn on the notifications bell as well if you want to be notified every single time I post. And yes, that is it. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!